In today's show, we've got new details about the stellar lineup announced for the 2022 Disney on Broadway concert series, Storybook Dining at Artist Point, and Boat Rides Reopening, Headline News, Meetups, Trivia, and oh so much more. All that in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. So glad you were here. Before we get too far into it, I want to make sure that you hear about our sponsor, which is Destinations to Travel. I know things are kind of crazy. You don't know what's safe, where it's safe to go. That's why you need a travel planner who will understand and find <laughs> Blue's trying to help out. That will help you find the best way to travel to save you time, money. <clears throat> excuse me, money. And if you're trying to go somewhere and their COVID restrictions are changing, they'll keep up to date on that for you. You don't have to worry about that. They'll, they'll track all that for you. And you know what? All of that doesn't cost you a dime. Why wouldn't you? So if you want to, uh, to have a little help booking your next vacation, whether you want to go on a Disney vacation, a cruise, or maybe you just want to get out of town for a few days, call our friends over at destination to travel. The best way to do that is to go to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel and, uh, fill out a questionnaire, which will, uh, let them know what you're looking for. And someone from destinations to travel will be in touch with you. So, uh, we want to Thank them for sponsoring the show. They're great friends. We appreciate them. And uh, we want to make sure that you connect with them. It doesn't cost you anything, but man, it'll really cost you if you don't have them on your side. So go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash travel. What's going on, buddy? Nothing. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? (laughs) Part of it was great. Yeah. And part Uh, of it not so great. Uh, part of it was not great. Yeah. How was yours? It's good. That's quite. That's good. That's good. We had a we had a big group of people over. Uh, we finished up dinner, or watching football, napping, mm-hmm. and then more people showed up, and then later on, more people showed up. So we had people in the house for a while. It was great. We had friends in. Uh, and then the next day we had those, some friends leave and some more come down. So it was just, wow. it was a busy weekend. And then Saturday night, I wasn't feeling all that great. Yikes. And, uh, I, I got a touch of stomach flu. Really? <laughs> Since then I've eaten very little and, yeah. uh, I've been, uh, it's just not been pretty, but, yeah. uh, yeah. anyhow, happy Thanksgiving to me. Happy Thanksgiving to your stomach. <laughs> that's right i could afford to lose some pounds don't worry yeah. it's, there's still some there <laughs> but uh yeah other than that it was great had a blast uh sid went over to the space coast and ran that half marathon with the cousin she did great mm-hmm. um but i gotta say you know run run medals are getting ridiculous i swear to god these these things are as big as dinner plates really i did you not? The wow. the one was as big as is my hand. Wow. And then some. It was huge. That's crazy. That's yeah. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. uh hey, she earned it, so she can wear the bling for all I care. Yeah. It's awesome. And Very- she probably didn't cost cost her as much as a Disney race. Oh good God, no. <laughs> no. She saved she probably spent Half. less money <laughs> traveling out to the space coast. Uh-huh. Getting a hotel room, uh-huh. food, uh-huh. the race itself, uh-huh. more food, right? And then driving back, she probably spent less than she would have on one race, one race at Disney. Yeah, yeah. and had just as much fun. Pretty sad. Bet, bet is sad. That's the way they do things. All right, you ready to get into it? Yeah, I guess there's nothing else we could do but get into the news. <laughs> And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Well, the holidays are a little bit more magical at the hotels of the Disneyland Resort. 
It's such an enchanting time of year at the hotels at Disneyland, where the holiday season brings whimsical flourishes, traditional trimmings, and dashes of pure Disney magic. Just steps from the Disneyland Park, California Adventure Park, and the Downtown Disney District. Do you know how hard I have to think to say Downtown Disney? I just, I've got it in my head now. It's Disney Springs. Yeah. Uh, here's some of the special sparkling ways that guests can enjoy their holiday visit. Uh, there's the holiday of decor at Disney's Paradise Pier. The lobby shines with a holiday tree adorned with an under the sea theme with blue, green, and silver decorations and a garland glistening with shells and starfish. The mid-century modern Disneyland hotel welcomes guests with a vintage and vintage in vintage inspired art on the lobby wall and pool archway and then disney's grand californian hotel and spa brings its majestic towering tree with ornaments inspired by the arts and crafts movement of early california grand gingerbread house and holiday treats are a highlight at disney's grand california hotel and spa uh, with the gingerbread replica of the hotel. Standing seven feet tall and 12 feet wide, the structure is created with more than 600 pounds of gingerbread, 600 pounds of powdered sugar, 250 pounds of fondant, and one pound of pixie dust. Wow. Woo -woo! Plus 25 hidden Mickeys, if you really wanted to know. Nearby, you can pick up sweet treats such as Mickey Christmas cookies from the lobby's holiday cart. Santa Claus and carolers will uh, be there as well. Each Disneyland Resort Hotel will feature Santa uh, from November 25th through December 24th of 2021 because, you know, he's got to get back up to the North Pole. Okay. And hotel guests are encouraged to share their wishes with St. Nick. Guests will also be delighted to hear the joyful sounds of handbell carolers at Disney's Grand California Hotel and Spa November 25th uh, through January 9th of 2022. That's kind of nice. And holiday carolers strolling the Disneyland Hotel and Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel will be singing on December 20, 15th through the 25th, uh, 2021. I don't really know if you call them hand barrel carolers. What would you call them? I don't know. Hand, hand, hand bell chorus? I don't know. Mm. So you can give the gift of a to I remember these. You can give the gift of a 2020 Disney getaway, and you could save up to 25% off select rooms with a magical new offer at a Disneyland Resort Hotel for stays from January 3rd of 2022 to April 7th, 2022. When booked by March 17th, guys, you gotta go talk to our friends at Destinations to Travel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lots of deals going on. Hey, John, one of my favorite thing is the Festival of the Farts uh, over at Epcot. Best of us for the rest of us. That's right. So they have uh, the Disney on Broadway is coming back and they have an awesome lineup. Uh, so this is now returning January 14th through February 21st. Uh, during the world's most magical celebration, the 50th. Uh, and they are welcoming back Disney on Broadway Concertary with three performances each evening, headlined by Broadway stars performing their favorite songs from uh, more than 25 years of award-winning Disney on Broadway. Uh, it is going to get kicked off January 14, 16, 17, 2021 with uh, Ariel Jacobs and Adam Jacobs. Uh, they are both from Aladdin. Then January 15, 18, 19, 22, 23, you're going to get Carrie Butler from Beauty and the Beast and Telly Lung from Aladdin. Uh, January 24th. 26, 27, 30, 31, and February 3rd and 4th, you're going to get Heidi Beckenstaff from Freaky Friday and the Little Mermaid and Robert Crichton from Frozen. January 25th, 28, 29th, February 1, 2, 5, and 6, you'll get Cara Lindsay from Newsy and Dan DeLuca from Newsies. February 7, 9, 10, 13, 14, 17, and 18, my two favorite people, Ashley Brown and Josh Strickland. Uh, Ashley was Mary Poppins, and Josh was Tarzan. 
Then February 8th, 11th, 12th, 15, 16, 19, and 20, you're going to get my second two favorite people, Kissy Simmons from The Lion King and Michael James Scott from Aladdin. And here is the piece de resistance. The finale of this whole thing comes on February 21st when you're going to get a special extended finale performance with Ashley Brown, Josh Strickland, Kissy Simmons, and uh, Michael James Scott. Now, these four uh, came here to Orlando during the pandemic and did a thing at the Art Center. And I think these guys were just jonesing. They're like, hey, yeah. just we have something put together. Just give us the last night. We have a thing. We'll do it. It'll blow everybody's mind. And I'm sure Disney said, fine, whatever. Go do it. Sure. Uh, well, we're not paying extra. We're not paying extra. Right. But do what you want to do. But do what you want to do. We'll give you the stage. Uh, they have not announced the dining packages yet. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll tell you uh, about the dining packages once they come out. But I'm I'm excited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and go a couple of nights this year. Maybe see if I can see all of them. If my blackout dates hold up. Good luck with that, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck with that. Yeah. We're going to take two minutes here, or a minute here. <laughs> All right. Uh, has anybody, uh, have you seen any of these on Broadway? Oh, by the way, I should mention, I think it might be over, but Disney is doing the twofer on Broadway, uh, where you can see Aladdin and Lion King for 145 The only side effect is you don't pick your seats, so they will pick your seats. Uh, and uh, Disney is picking up all of the tab on uh, those tickets. So they're paying all the ticket master fees. They are refundable, exchangeable, and cancelable. Wow. So uh, Disney on Broadway, Aladdin, and Lion King. It's a twofer for 145 They were running a special where you were saving $25 off that. So uh, go well, to I DisneyOnBroadway.com. So is that you don't get to pick the seat? Is that right? You do not get to pick the seat. They're just putting you wherever. Um, so you kind of have to roll the dice a little bit. But you're getting two shows for 145 That yeah. is not horrible. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do it right, I, I bet you can get both in one day. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so there's, uh, according to an Instagram post by Walt Disney Imagineering, a new lighting composition has been developed especially for, for Spaceship Earth as part of the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. The post states that the new lighting will be an addition to the beacons of magic that are part of Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration, adding new sparkle and a nod to Epcot of holidays past, which sounds pretty cool. I'm down with that. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be reflective of starlight in clear winter skies and the beautiful green and blue glow of the Aurora Borealis of Northern Lights. That's yeah. kind of cool. I've seen some video and some pictures of this. It really looks cool. It's about time they start leveraging that big ball. Yeah. Yeah. I think December 12th, I have a uh, park reservation. I want to go see cool. this. Cool, the, cool. The holiday balls. Holiday ball. <laughs> All right. Hey, Storybook uh, Dining at Artist Point and Boat Rights are over at the port. Uh, Order of Leans is reopening soon. Uh, so if you're making dining plans for your upcoming Walt Disney World visit, you have two additional choices. And trust me, you need them because there aren't any. Uh, have just been announced. Storybook, uh, sir, uh, storybook. I always want to say circus after that word. I don't know why. Uh, storybook Dining at Artist Point is located at Disney's Wilderness Lodge uh, in the former Artist Point location. Right. We'll reopen on December 16th with reservations being available to book beginning Thursday, December 2nd. So on Thursday, December 2nd, you can start making your reservations for the 16th. Uh, also, according to this announcement, guests will see a Snow White, Dopey and Grumpy, and the Queen as they walk through the Enchanted Forest. Uh, the meal is <laughs> price fixed. <laughs> this is a new word Disney has learned and is used yes. all over the place. Um, I, I, I'm, 
I'm not a fan of the price fix. Because if I don't want three courses, why do I have to pay that? Is it that you understand. don't want three courses or you don't like the fact they've taken control out of your dinner out of your hands? Both. Yeah. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Because particularly since I'm trying to watch my what I eat and how much I eat, I don't right. particularly want three courses yeah. sometimes. Yeah. 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 I deal with the other part of that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, loss of control is a big yeah, deal. Yeah, uh, over at Port Orleans Resort, uh, over at Riverside Boat Rides Dining Hall, we'll see a reopening date of December fourteenth, with reservations opening up on December second. Nice. So, so thanks. Nice. I I like boat rides. I I like the jambalaya. I like the crawfish yeah. at Dufay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's some pretty good choices over there. They they should have a. Uh, you know Tiana and uh, the Gator, yeah, and Prince Naveen walk yeah. through there. Make that a dining deal. I mean, come sure. on, yes, yeah. right there. Then you can charge more, Disney. That you could change it from boat rights to Tiana's Tiana's place. Yeah, yeah. you know, guy, guys, it writes itself. Yeah, uh, I was looking the other day. Talk about price fix. Uh, Liberty Tree and Crystal Palace uh, both went to price fixed. So mm-hmm. that's. Liberty Tree, uh, Crystal Palace, and now Beauty and the Beast, uh, uh, Be Our Guest, are all price fixed. That's three out of the five restaurants in the Magic Kingdom are price fixed. You only have Skipper Cantina and Tony's now. And the Plaza, which is, you know, quick server steroids. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Well, if you want to support the show... If you like what we do here and you want to help keep us on the air, then I would encourage you to go over to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon, because that is the best way for us to be supported. But we also create up to three shows each week just for our patrons. Now, we've got some longtime patrons that we deeply appreciate james david and willie thank you guys so very much uh and we have a show uh we have two shows at the five dollar level we have an additional show at the ten dollar level and then uh, we also have a level where you get the amazing disney by the numbers t-shirt uh shirts delivered to your door um that uh, you don't have to do anything. They just you, you tell us what size you want, and it arrives. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then at each level, we have some Disney swag built into it. So it it, it totally is worth it if you like the show. Uh, I would encourage you to try it for a month or two, and let us know what you think. You know, if you don't like it, no harm, no foul. Uh, but we think you'll probably stick around because it's a uh, it's a lot of extra value, a lot of extra content. And then uh, Patreon's even uh, helped us out by saying if you wanted to pay annually up front, you'll save ten percent. So why wouldn't you go to DisneyParksPodcast dot com forward slash Patreon? All right, uh, coming up very quickly, December tenth, we are having our annual monorail christmas crawl we're going to start at 6 p.m at the outer rim at the contemporary on the fourth floor uh come join us there i am going to bring some giveaways some fun things some swag that we're going to give away uh just for showing up because it's christmas and we like to give merry christmas i guess all right john hey last week we had a trivia question what Mm -hmm. was nemo's mother's name nemo's mommy not Dory, uh, but Nemo. Yesterday special. <laughs> Tilapia. Yeah. Her name was Coral. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. And uh, Corey is the winner. And uh, Corey, it's in the mail. Nice. All right. Hey, John. You. What? Nope. Let me say this again. If the character Merida in the movie Brave straightened out her hair how long would it be wow so if the character merida in the movie brave straightened out her hair how long would it be longer than yours that is correct and mine (laughs) if you know the correct answer send it to disney parks podcast at gmail.com 
So Disney has released more details regarding six new characters coming to the Galactic Star Cruiser experience. Uh, there are some new details on characters coming to life when the Star Cruiser uh, debuts on March 1st of 2022. While guests aboard the Halcyon might meet the likes of Ray and Kylo Ren, several new characters are being created solely for the Star Cruiser. Hmm. So let's get uh, let's get to introducing who we've got here. So uh, we've got Captain Riola Keevan, charismatic and respected and trustworthy Captain Keevan will lead your voyage aboard the Halcyon Star Cruiser. She is strong and a decisive leader, enduring herself to both her crew and her passengers by being fair to all, cool under pressure, a skill learned from her adventurous history you'll likely find the captain on the ship's bridge and you'd be wise to listen carefully and follow her instructions oh boy okay cruise director uh lenka mock uh is that julie is... <laughs> it's not it should be julie uh there is much fun to be had aboard the star cruiser and lenka mock is your go-to crew member to discover it all as the captain's right hand mock is a uh, Mock is in charge of onboard entertainment, and it's her job to make sure your voyage is an adventure. An optimistic and joyful soul, Mock's happiness is derived from yours. So this is definitely someone you'll want to meet. Okay, I got to stop here for a second. When you're talking about Star Wars characters, and this this transcends Star Wars, Star Trek. What are these characters like? Where do they come from? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think it's great that we're getting personality traits and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and we're, but what is the captain? What is the cruise director? Where did she come from? What starships has she been on? It's right. It's right. SK-620, an astromech droid. Makes total sense. Uh, SK-620 is Mock's assistant cruise director, ensuring things run smoothly and on time. He keeps an eye on all the workings of the ship and is devoted to Mock and Captain Keevan. And while he loves to have fun with a guest, he's also good in a pinch if anything should go awry, one of his hidden talents. Sammy the mechanic. Sammy's proficiency as a ship's new mechanic is actually not his most enduring feature. His enthusiasm and good natured personality quickly won over the Star Cruiser's crew. That makes him popular among guests who happen across his path. He's clearly eager to prove himself on such a well appointed vessel, and his tasks always seem to get done somehow. And you've got D309 is another droid you can see on view screens aboard the Halcyon Star Cruiser. Her primary responsibility is running ship logistics. So she certainly knows everyone and everything happening on board during a voyage. But her favorite part of the job is talking with passengers. Built centuries ago by uh, the Candrilla Starline's founder, D3 has... <laughs> little on the nose, don't you think? Uh -huh. Has seen the ship's history and the entire galaxy evolve, and she's not shy about sharing her knowledge and opinions with passengers. And finally, we get First Order Lieutenant Harmon Croy. That sounds ominous. Mm -hmm. While the Halcyon Star Cruiser is a pleasure vessel, this is a stormy time in the galaxy as battles rage between the First Order and the Resistance. And it's often impossible to avoid that uh, the conflict. The ambitious and intimidating Lieutenant Croy is on special assignment to root out and expose any Resistance fighters who are rumored to be aboard the ship. Will you help him? Will you support the resistance or will you just sit back and see how the whole thing plays out? The choice is yours. Very interesting. Yeah, I agree with you that, you know, we, we don't know how these characters fit into the Star Wars universe since Disney is just making them up for this yeah. specific resort. You know? And I, I get it. They don't want to, you know, one is not going to be a Wookiee. Right. You know. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, where are they from? Where have they served? Give, give what planet have more... they traveled yeah. from? Yeah. What galaxy are they from? Yeah. Yeah. Give us a well, Yeah. Give us a little little idea. Anyway. All right. 
did Captain Picard bring him here? I mean, <laughs> uh, speaking of Picard, I I think the Star Trek Discovery series is out again. I gotta go renew my uh, trial subscription mm. <laughs> with a different email address. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Adventures by Disney is now requiring proof of COVID nineteen vaccination vaccinations beginning January twenty twenty two. Uh, ABD has announced that all guests must provide proof of being fully vaccinated before joining any trip which departs on or after January 12th of 2022. Proof of a negative COVID-19 PCR test uh, result will no longer be accepted as an alternative. All Mm -hmm. guests must be fully vaccinated before joining any trip or provide proof of a negative COVID-19 PCR test uh, taken within five days prior to the start of the trip for Adventures by Disney uh, prior to January 12th, 2022. Certain circumstances may require COVID-19 vaccinations due to country entry requirements. Uh, Adventure by Disney will require all guests to be vaccinated for travel to Level 3 International Destinations, and this is why you need a travel agent, as listed on their Center for uh, Centers for Disney Control COVID-19 Travel Recommendations by Destination webpage. In consideration of guidance from the CDC, Adventure by Disney accepts the following vaccine types, Pfizer, Moderna, J&J, and AstraZeneca. Uh, the CDC uh, defines fully vaccinated as... 14 days after receiving a single dose of an accepted one-dose vaccine or the second dose of an accepted two-dose vaccine. So here's hmm. the interesting thing that goes with this, I guess, is, uh, you know, Disney's been uh, mandating all the cast members have to get vaccinated uh, in order to work. But now the governor of Florida has says you can't do that. So now Disney is making it optional for their cast members to get vaccinated, but highly we're recommending that they do so because yes. if they break that, they will be fined by the governor. Whoopsie. Yeah. And being that they're the largest single employer in the state of Florida, it's kind of obvious if you're going to be bending or breaking the rules. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Could be, could be a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a sticky wicket. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, alrighty then. Let me do this. Bing de bong regional Disney staycation events coming to six cities this fall. Disney's preparing a way for those sticking close to home this holiday season to connect with their fandom with newly introduced Mickey and Friends Stay True staycation events. The events will take place in six cities, New York, Washington, D.C., Austin, Texas, Salt Lake City, Utah, Chicago, and Los Angeles. First of all, why are they doing it in Los Angeles? Because it's close to Disneyland and nobody can get there. Too much traffic. It's like, we're going to do this in Tampa, Florida. Anyway. uh, The event will kick off. We're going to do this in like a Coey. Yeah, we're going to do it in Florida. Yeah. Uh, the event will kick off in New York City on November 20th, where fans who have completed the free registration in advance will be able to make their way to the Flatiron Building to check in and begin a day filled with adventure. Guests will have the chance to receive a yet-to-be-announced giveaway while supplies last. In addition, as per Disney, quote, fans will be able to experience a surprise and delight moment at the Madison Square Park dog run that both owners and pets will enjoy as well as sensational six themed sweet and savory snacks photo ops and limited edition discounts on special offers fans celebrating in the Walt Disney World and Disneyland parks will also find city guides to go along with Mickey and Friends Stay True Staycation theme the guides will point out spots to see nibbles to enjoy and shops to stop by for more information and a chance to register Go to MickeyFriendsStayTrue.com. Very cool. It's nice oh, yeah. that they're giving something to people that don't want to or can't travel to. Yeah. Uh, uh, Disney yeah. World for the 50th. Yeah, no know, kidding. Or even get to a Disney park for that matter. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Good stuff. That's cool. Hey, kids. 
how about a little headline news? And now, the headline news. All right. Uh, starting with Disney Cruise Line will require vaccinations now for guests five years older beginning in January of 2022. So these people were exempt, but now that there is a children's vaccination, they must be vaccinated in order to cruise. Mm. Once again, another reason why you might need a travel agent to help you navigate this quagmire. Yep. Uh, there are more December dates at capacity. Disney World has halted ticket sales. We spoke about this last week on select dates. Uh, yeah, select dates are the entire month of December. Uh, and dates of capacity are the entire month of December, practically. Yeah. So I think it's like everything from the 15th on is at capacity. Yeah. So well, that's why they stopped doing the tickets and Yeah, and all passes that and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. Yep. Uh, Disney has closed off the Play Pavilion walkway as a status of the project may be remaining uncertain. Mm. So maybe we're not going to get a Play Pavilion quite yet. That pavilion is cursed. It is. It is. It's It's cursed. Tear it down, build an attraction. Absolutely. I would much (laughs) rather have an attraction than a pavilion filled with virtual games. Yeah. But tear it down... But, you know, tear it down, build the Guardians of the Galaxy section of Epcot, the mm-hmm. space section, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got Guardians, you've got Space 220, you've got uh, Mission uh, Space. Mission Space. And put something else there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, there's been a lot of work going on, extensive actually work going on, on the Harmonious Barges. Oh, so, really? Yeah, well, they had a couple of uh, problems. Really? You know, where, uh, yeah, where the Stargate portal wasn't working as <laughs> as designed. So I think they've been doing some work. There's been a lot of barges out there with cranes and things. So maybe they're just adjusting lights to make it a little bit more synchronous. I don't know. Nice. Uh, hey, Santa Claus is now at Epcot. And you can go actually meet Santa Claus at Epcot. Apparently, he's vaccinated and doesn't care if you have COVID or not. That's right. (laughs) Santa will have a mask on. Yeah, I'm sure. Or a beard. Uh, uh, But I think they're bringing the storytelling Santas as well. So if that was your jam, I think you could go see them as well. Those are great. Yep. Uh, Mickey Mouse is on the move. Uh, His new meet and greet location at Epcot is now back over at the Pixar Pavilion. You know, where they show the Pixar movies. Mm-hmm. He's back over there now uh, because, you know, the entire front of the park is a disaster area. Uh, Figment's holiday sweater returns. So if, if you don't know, uh, over in the Imagination Pavilion, Figment has a holiday sweater he puts on for the holidays, and that is back this year. Yay. Over at Disneyland, the Believe Magic uh, Key Pass is sold out. You can no longer purchase a Believe Magic Key Pass at Disneyland. Did, did they have limited quantity? They can't make yes. more? No. They Yikes. were limiting the quant- quantity as to keep the limitation of how many had these things and not the entire Orange County of California. Oh, wow. So all these passes over there had limited <laughs> availability. Wow. Uh. Over at the Caribbean Resort, the bridge is going to be replaced uh, beginning in January. So if you're staying over there, uh, that bridge will be under construction, which may make walking around and navigating the resort a little interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Disney Light the Night fireworks show is going to resume December 1st at Tokyo Disney Resort. So hey if you're heading over to Tokyo, they're getting their fireworks back. Yep. Good for them. Uh, you can now make reservations at the Le Creperie de Paris at Remy's Ratatouille Adventure over in Epcot. So the sit-down, you can now make reservations for when they say make reservations. There's a quick service and there's a sit-down. You can do either one. But now it's on the reservation system. 
Nice. I don't know why they do that. Like the first 30 days or so or 45 days that a new restaurant opens up, it's not in the reservation system. It's very <laughs> yeah. weird. And I also know that they used to not take tables like the first 30 or 40 days right. too, right. which was always weird. It's like, don't you know how to put that in the system? You have oh, all the other restaurants that are doing that. <laughs> I think they just have to get the bugs worked out. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Oh, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade. Now, this is normally the parade that you get when you go to a Christmas party or now mm-hmm. the after hours party. Yeah. Uh, but for the week of Christmas, this will be a daily regular parade. Wow. I'm using the word parade and not cavalcade. It will be a regular daily parade. So I'm hoping that this is now the start of parades back at the Magic Kingdom and not these cavalcades. Yeah. I don't know know why they wouldn't have parades. I mean, all the characters are distanced from the the common folk. Yeah. And all the cast members are. And they're moving. They're not like they're sitting still, you know. Yeah. Um, You know, everybody's outside. outside. Yeah. You know. New, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's great. My question, well, I mean, one of many. Do the characters, the non face characters, are they wearing masks underneath there too? (laughs) I mean, just to add insult to injury, like, probably, like the costume's not hot enough to make him wear a mask on top of that. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. just to, if anybody out there is a friend of a friend, let us know. I would love to know that answer too. Of of a fur character. 